What's going on, Doombots? Uh, Tony Skinjiu here with another team review. Finally, the long requested and long awaited Guardians of the Galaxy team review. So, as is tradition, we're going to do accessibility, usability, breakpoints, right? We're going to talk about tier fours, what they need, what they don't need, where they're useful, and how high you want to get them to do random stuff in the game. Now, as you guys may or may not know, Guardians are one of my favorite teams in the game just because of how much value you get out of them, but I am trying to be a little bit more discerning when it comes to uh, delivering this information. I try to present the facts, not as many of my opinions. However, obviously my investment does maybe shade a little bit of what I'm saying more positively than negatively, as some will say. So without going much further into the conversation, I just want everybody to take a look at the core of the Guardians team. Now this would be the team right here that you would use for most content in the game, raids, etc. And obviously you can make hybrids out of them. But when we talk about the Guardians, these are the five core members of the Guardians team. Sorry, Gamora, you didn't make the cut. What we're going to do is we're going to show a Blitz fight off as we talk about how available they are and what they can do. So the Guardians of the Galaxy are one of the earliest accessible teams with the major exception of their leader, Star-Lord. He is a legendary character. Uh, Drax is available in the Arena Store, Rocket in the Raid Store, Mantis and Gamora, the sixth member, are available in the Blitz Store, and Groot is node farmable, I believe, in Nexus 1-9? Very early to my memory. Uh, I believe Nexus 1-9 is correct. So when you are working with the guardians one of the reasons this is such an early accessible team is one they progress you towards unlocking star Wars themselves they're one of the teams that unlock the legendary to complete the team like off the top of my head just one other team and that's magneto most of the other uh, legendaries are unlocked by incomplete teams so the benefit of working on the guardians early is that you will unlock Star Wars with them. And the added benefit of Star Wars is in order to unlock him, you also can use Ravagers. Uh, Yondu, Ravager, Bruiser, Boomer, and Stitcher. Now they're not going to be covered in this video, but there are a total of eight characters, nine characters, give or take, that you can use to unlock Star Wars and complete this team, making them one of the best options for early game farming. Let's take a quick look at their usability and get into why you would even try to do that. So, usability for the Guardian team, usefulness. Well, to start off, the team is an absolutely stellar mid to late game raid team as a whole. Uh, Star Wars and Rocket and Groot are pretty much a core of a lot of teams in that when they work together, their Rocket is putting out the most possible damage as frequently as possible. And there are a lot of variations of that team. You may have heard of the BKT or the Minervians or whatever you want to call it, but using characters like Minerva or Thanos to energy battery characters like Rocket uh, can make it so that every turn Rocket is ulting on a raid node, which will absolutely help the team uh, completely crush raid nodes with key investment points. Uh, the Guardians themselves are usable on anything that requires Cosmic, obviously. Uh, there's a good mix of bio and tech characters out of the core guardians, I believe Gamora being the only skill on this team. So you can use Star Lord and Rocket on any tech specific node, whereas Drax, Mantis, and Groot are viable on any bio specific node in a raid. And without going into too much detail, the Guardians of the Galaxy slash the BKT, but we don't want to go into detail about that right now, the Guardians of the Galaxy don't require a great deal of investment for them to accomplish very simple tasks like progressing in U5 and even into some of the harder difficulties of U6, just on the strength of the investment of characters like Star Wars and Rocket. Uh, Drax is a very formidable tank in that uh, he spawns with taunt and can gain more taunt. You don't need to put too much into him. His kit is not great, but his stats are phenomenal. Groot is... Uh, kind of a damage dealing healer controller kind of character where he can make sure your team stays alive through support while also doing a ton of damage with his basic whenever he does it and being called for assists from characters like Star Wars and Rocket. Star Wars is arguably the best energy battery in the game 
in that he can give adjacent characters two energy every handful of turns, as well as arbitrarily throwing energy to adjacent characters and guardians on his turn with his passive. So there's not many targeted energy batteries in the game, and his is very reliable depending on how you handle out placement. The Guardians literally never run out of uses. In the early stages of the game, you can use characters like Drax, Groot, and Mantis to help you line up some of the earlier raids you might be doing, which is U5, even maybe the beginning stages of U6. The other two characters might be a little bit off. Rocket is usually a little bit low level and harder to farm than the rest of them, so just Drax, Groot, and Mantis would be a very good sustain comp if you have two high damage dealing characters like uh, off the top of my head characters uh, maybe punisher cm symbiote spider-man anyone who is doing a good deal of starting damage you can use them as a raid team while you work on them to unlock star lord uh, even yondu does do a pretty decent job in those earlier stages but he kind of falls off as time goes on just thinking of characters out loud Gamora is very adequate as a damage dealer early. Uh, she kind of falls off around level 60 to 65. She doesn't do much. Uh, she's very reliant on the strength of other characters, but she is a brawler, so you do get some use out of her later when you put her on a brawler's team. Ultimately, as you progress, the second you unlock Star Wars, you're going to have a lot more opportunity for you. The core of the Guardians team, the Star Wars Rocket Group combo, uh, is a very good team for any situation where you can use them. That's not including war or raids or arena. They are very helpful. They are very quick and they do a lot of uh, immediate damage and splash damage. So you can probably get a lot of value after you enter the mid game. And even going into the late game, you're still going to be nodes on gamma, alpha and beta raids where these characters will be among the best options. I don't think there are many more tech characters of high value than characters like Star Wars and Rocket. There just aren't. Uh, Groot is one of the best Splash bio characters in the game. He's got a lot of sustain. Mantis is a phenomenal raid healer. I've used her for a very long time. Uh, these characters uh, give you value throughout the rest of the game. But the beautiful thing about their usability is the lack of investment required for them to accomplish their task. Just the Guardians of the Galaxy, if you only ever worked on Star Wars, Rocket, and Groot, uh, Mantis and Drax would just be there as kind of a little bit of sustain. They're very modular in that you can kind of place two other characters on that team uh, and still be able to accomplish whatever the task you are. Viable as an early to mid-game arena team, viable as a war team throughout the game as a defense or offense team, uh, viable for raids literally for the entirety of the game while they may lose some value going out of u6 and into u7 that doesn't inherently say that you will never use them again your investment in those characters will still be useful any other time and you do tend to see a lot of situations as you're just playing around with other game modes or testing where characters like star wars rocket and group uh, are incredibly useful. Drax ends up being a very good character in the new PvP game mode too, if you haven't used them. So the more OS usability of this team is when the second you get them, you will find that uh, they can be used from the moment you unlock them until the end game in some meaningful way you will never regret your investment in this team. The slight added benefit of the Guardians is once you unlock Star Wars, you have more or less trivialized some content like Dark Dimension 1 or 2. This team uh, with Star Wars at 6 stars is totally adequate to complete Dark Dimension 1, and Star Wars and Minerva are two incredibly easy pieces to complete Dark Dimension 2. I say easy in that if you have Star Wars and Minerva, your Dark Dimension 2 run is already going to be better than if you don't have either of those two characters. Uh, as a matter of fact, I even argue that Star Wars and Minerva, plus at this point three other decent characters, would be more than enough for you to make Dark Dimension 2 now a very easy and trivial pursuit. I can say personally, I was the thousand and sixth person to clear Dark Dimension, and Star Wars and Minerva were the highlights of my team. Uh, my Minerva was very weak. My Star Wars was, I believe, five star at the time. 
and the other three characters were Juggernaut, Sabretooth, and Nick Fury. And while we look back and say those aren't the best possible characters, you're right, but it didn't matter because the entire fight was just how many times can I make Minerva old. So when you unlock the Guardians, you are unlocking pieces of your future in this game, and their usability is great because of what that means to you. The game is not about having one strong team. If you try to have one strong team, when the next big team comes out, you're going to be behind the eight ball. The game is more or less the marathon of having multiple teams in a position that you can invest in. And when you start with the Guardians, you literally put yourself in a great position in every game mode you can to progress meaningfully as you work on other teams. Now let's talk about breakpoints. Breakpoints on this team is incredibly easy. Uh, we'll start with Mantis. Mantis doesn't need any tier 4s. She has no requirement whatsoever. Her will to power on spawn goes from 75% chance to gain charge to always gain charge. Yeah, I can think of situations where this would be great. Uh, I can also think of most situations where it wouldn't. This is not a tier 4 that I've ever even considered. Guaranteed to have a chance to stun someone. Not important. Now, if this increased on turn heal her, her self heal or how much health she gained I would in addition to this I would consider it more but since it's just an extra 25% and you're probably not going to be doing that too often not really relevant uh, slightly worse than like Mordo's special tier for all if you watch the supernatural video uh, soothe so it increases the healing by a flat number meh uh, in raids transfer two negative effects and clear two positive effects instead of one to two on each uh, this is kind of a your mileage may vary investment if you find that you're fighting and you need her to transfer the massive amount of negative effects you have you may want to put into this with, with certainty if characters aren't getting more than one or two uh, negative effects to begin with it's probably better to just leave it alone again not another ability i saw necessary uh, which is a good thing the less tier fours you have to put into a character to make them usable uh, by my definition makes them great because tier fours are such a sporadic resource that it's important to save them and use them only on the highest impact investments you can uh, moving to empathy this is her big raid heal it's on a relatively cool, short cooldown uh, if you don't have minerva you can use her with thanos and this heal will be almost as reliable as her passive heal almost not as much depending on her investment uh, again, the plus 250 healing, that doesn't matter. It doesn't increase the percentage. She's kind of a character from a different time. Not really worth it. An additional regeneration to self and all allies? Maybe. Um, it goes from in raids to being maybe two to definitely two. Not really. Uh, in sweep? Nope. She doesn't do damage. This is stupid. Don't do this. This is silly. Uh, moving to next character is Gamora. Again, none of them. I don't even put this in and I could I, I just you know what fine here I did it was it worth it absolutely not is this one gonna be worth it absolutely not none of it's worth it even what I did I regret but I regret so you can see she doesn't need it extra crit chance for guardian allies you're not using her on the team long enough so that investment is not important uh, flashing slash gain offense up for two turns attack primary target for Damage on kill, fill speed bar by 100%. Uh, if she did more damage uh, overall, this would be great because it would definitely kill someone. Uh, very rarely does it actually do enough damage for it to be relevant. Uh, she would probably benefit from having some kind of uh, piercing with her giant sword, maybe. I don't know. But this attack doesn't... She doesn't even do that much damage for this attack to be that cool. Um... Her best attack is actually her basic, we'll get to that in a second. Ruthless Braid, another chained attack that does decent damage and on kill fill speed bar. Really good at cleaning up characters that Rocket left behind if you are using this team, but ultimately as she is the first character you remove from the team, uh, and she's better as a brawler, I don't necessarily think that this investment is going to help you too much. The primary reason why is her basic is pretty much the most damage she can do. Uh, unfortunately, the tier 4 upgrade also doesn't make that much better. Uh, attack primary target for 250 damage with a 40 or 50% chance to bonus attack up to two times. Yes, it's a 40% chance for each bonus attack. Is again, a character that was in the game since the beginning. 
probably could use the rework, hasn't gotten one, probably isn't going to get one. Uh, this attack is her highest damage attack if it works, but since it's like less likely to happen than things uh, special, uh, she's just been outscaled. I actually, if you had an option between using Gamora on the Guardians or Thing, Thing is actually better, even though he's a little bit slower, he still hits harder and more reliably. She is just not worth investing in. Now, early investment you have in her will be helpful and she will kind of be useful in certain fights at certain times. She is a cosmic skill character. There's not many of them. I think Proxima and Corvus Glaive are the other two. Uh, doesn't line up that much, but mm, you can leave her behind and you wouldn't really regret it. Moving into Groot. Groot's great. Um, as for Tier 4 investments... I Am Groot is, was the, the hotness at the time because it was the guaranteed uh, opportunity to always apply slow to attacker for one turn when they hit Groot. Uh, it used to be two, they nerfed it because uh, the attacker would hit Groot, be slowed, and continue, or if an attacker assisted on a Groot, uh, they'd be slowed for a series of time. It became a bit of a problem. Uh, Groot's ability is very good if you plan on using this team on war defense. Uh, outside of war defense, it's kind of mediocre. I, I don't regret the investment I did because when I put it in here, the BK team is one of the best teams in the game and totally useful. But going forward, this is really a your mileage may vary pick. Um, outside of that, uh, on death, he gets a slightly higher chance to revive from 15 to 20 with this investment. 15% to 20% is... You know, one six versus one fifth at a time. Meh. Uh, apply death proof. Uh, apply defense up to all allies. Apply speed up, offense up, and counter to guardian allies. Uh, some of the points in previous fights, especially if you're using characters like Minerva, uh, you want him to die so that he buffs everybody and then Minerva would res him or he reses himself. Uh, as you go on, he just is such a better healer and tankier character that uh, the lower he is, he's still an asset to the team, but as you make him stronger, the accidental times where he does die uh, does boost the team up. So this is a cool passive, but not necessarily a great one. Uh, Life Spores, this is his mediocre heal. Uh, even the tier 4 investment to bring it to 5,000. 5,000 isn't much healing. Early game it is, late game not so much. 5% of this character's max health. He does have a pretty decent health pool, but 5% is nothing. Clear 2 negative effects from all allies, absolutely huge ability. Apply immunity to the lowest health guardian ally for two turns. Uh, if he's the only guardian, it will always give him immunity. If there's another one, you know how it works. Great ability, um, kind of like a JJ or a Scientist Supreme. A little bit weaker than Scientist Supreme, a little bit stronger than uh, JJ, if you're following what that means, just because of how it works. Useful ability, absolutely phenomenal, don't need to tier for it. Uh, overgrowth. This is one of his best abilities. He gains death proof and applies uh, death proof and defense up to all allies. I don't think he needs two death proofs. As a matter of fact, him dying is usually really good. So don't need a tier for it. But this ability is great. The defense up is huge in raids. Death proof is huge everywhere. Uh, and if you've ever fought against a Gru on a Guardians team, you know that if you don't kill enough characters before this goes off, you're just going to have a harder fight. Phenomenal ability. Uh, crushing Blow. Actually a crushing blow, kind of crazy. Wouldn't necessarily tier for it, but you see 300% damage, you're like, Tony, that's not a high percentage. Root's got a ton of, of base damage for a support character. Like, almost 10,000 at, you know, gear tier 11, 7 star with a handful of red stars. That number only goes up. His assists and attacks are absolutely insane when he hits someone. It's, he chunks them really hard. So this attack is like thirty to 40,000 without critting. Uh, big basic attack. So don't need to tier for it, but Groot, very viable character just throughout the game. Uh, Drax, now you're going to look and say, Tony, why haven't you tier for Drax? Because I'm a firm believer that Drax's kid is terrible. However, Drax's stats are amazing, and if nothing makes Drax's stats higher health, higher damage, or higher armor, well, he doesn't actually do damage, higher armor, there's the only two stats I care about on Drax. Drax's job is to survive. That's it. Not many of these abilities make him survive more. Destroyer increases his drain, so he does a little bit more self-sustain. Good fighting. Uh, if he ever survives long enough to do it, your team probably didn't do what it was supposed to do in the first place, and even if it does... 
it's a weird chain hybrid. He doesn't, he's not killing anybody. I never found, I never even found a reason to do this. And unlike the Gamora, uh, I'm not going to. I prefer to have my Drax uh, exactly where he is. Uh, fast reflexes, uh, gain defense up for one to two turns instead of just one turn. I don't even want to give them my resources for a chance at a second turn. If Drax gets two, three turns in the game, your team has failed. Even in raids, you don't need it. There are better options. Groot will put defense up on characters. You don't need this on Drax. He does not need more turns of defense up, let alone the chance of more turns. And we're not even going to talk about two counters. He doesn't do damage, so it doesn't matter. As for Knife Slash, he doesn't do damage, so it doesn't matter. Um, his, his multipliers and his base damage number are anemic at best. I think that Drax is, like I said, I put gear on him. And I hope for high red stars on him, because stats are what make Drax king. His job is to prevent the rest of your team from dying. The better he does that, uh, it's easier, and none of the other investments make him better at that. Granted, I could bring him to 75, but I far out use uh, how often Drax is relevant to me. Uh, so I gear tier 13 him on the principle that he's awesome, but not really anything else. I wouldn't recommend you do it. This is just me being a silly person. Uh, especially because I love Drax. Last, or second to last, we have Rocket. Um, none of these tier fours are necessary, so I'm going to start with that statement, and then we'll go back and talk about why. Expert Tinker. Uh, tech allies gain 5% damage. That's great, since you have another tech ally on your team, or you can put other tech allies on your team. He's just pretty good at that. Uh, on turn, 40% chance to apply offense up to one to two allies, or it's the same chance... To apply offense up just to two allies uh, it's a chance of a chance don't bother not worth it uh, maximum damage now this investment uh, just increases the total amount of damage by 30 percent but since you're hitting everybody it can be anywhere from 150 to 300 percent extra damage you know because you're hitting everybody on the field uh, if Groot is an ally which he should always be attack all enemies for 400 uh, percent with the tier 4 I'm sorry apologies uh, 360, it would be 320 normally. So just being present around Groot, the ability gives him about a 20% damage increase, let alone the tier 4. Now, I didn't, I did this because at the time, I loved using Rocket for a lot of content or this particular team. I haven't needed it since then, so it's not really a regret, more of a an investment I used when it was the best. And now, if I could refund it, I would. I don't really need it. But then again, it's still really fun to use him and hit everybody for like 120,000 damage. It's a good attack. He does a lot of damage. That's his job. So this is more damage on the main damage deal of your turn. And since this is his ult, which is the entire point of why you have Rocket to ult over and over again, I don't think this is the worst investment, um, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Uh, pretty good plan. Uh, this goes from 310 damage to 340 uh, damage with the tier 4 investment. He gets a 70% chance to gain a random assist, not including a guaranteed chance to gain a Groot assist. Uh, this is his opening move. He will tend to use this immediately in between him and Star-Lord, who are some of the fastest characters when they're together. Uh, you could probably take out one key character, uh, especially if you get the right number of assists. I don't, again, regret this tier 4 investment, but... Uh, I did it a lot for war defense. BKT was such a good war team for a long time that making sure Rocket had a chance of just absolutely obliterating one character was super relevant to me. I don't think it's necessary, but your mileage may vary. You decide as you go. Uh, as for Rocket Rifle, uh, you don't. If you're using this, something went wrong somewhere, or you know you're trying to not proc infinite counters. Not a lot of times where you want to use this attack, so I don't necessarily recommend. Uh, tier 4 it, but it's a good damage attack on a good damage character that does hit multiple people, especially if you're trying to get around a taunt and kill something else. Now, uh, your build your team right, you're probably not going to worry too much about using this too often, but it's there. I wouldn't tier for it. Still useful ability. Rocket is still one of the best AoE damage dealers in the game. Not the best, that's still Black Bolt, but he's one of the best and... You're not really going to regret too much investment on him. The problem is Rocket doesn't really hold up in the true endgame parts of right now. Dark Dimension 3 or 
U7 and some of the harder difficulties. Rocket doesn't really survive long enough no matter what you do, so he loses a little bit of value. But up to that point, everything Rocket does is going to be useful, and then after that, he will be a good offense or defense player in war. No regrets on anything you put into him. Uh, Star Ward being the final character on the team and the leader of the team, uh, I will go through this and I'm going to say something you're probably not going to agree with. I don't think this ability is worth tier 4. Uh, it's very simple. When I tier 4'd it, I thought it was a guarantee to generate ability energy for adjacent allies. It just said generate 1 to 2. So I just assumed it was, oh, always do that with a 50% chance of gain, you know, throwing him to guardians. That's what I thought. I was wrong. It's a 50% chance to throw 1 to 2 ability energy for adjacent allies and generate 1 to 2 ability for guardians. So, since here it was 1 energy and here it goes 1 to 2, I cannot tell you that I felt like the amount of times I got 2 energy was so much better than the amount of times I did it. I can't tell you that. Truly. Uh, even when I was doing Dark Dimension 2. So is this a good investment? It's fine. But I can't... No one can provide statistics that say, man, that extra one energy 50% of the time actually mattered. Not even happened. Just actually mattered. I don't... I don't know. I guess the chance is better than it not happening. And since he's a great energy batter, it's fine. Uh, I don't regret this investment. But in my free-to-play account, uh, where I'm unlocking him soon, I don't intend on putting it in. I uh, just don't think the value is there. Your mileage may vary. I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments. I look forward to not reading those. Uh, his ultimate is just giant amounts of damage to one target. Uh, gain an assist from a guardian ally. Always gain an assist from an additional random ally. So the less guardians you have on your team, the more likely it is to get you the guardian you want. Uh, Groot and Rocket are both phenomenal at assisting, so if you only have Star-Lord, Groot, and Rocket on the team, this attack is always going to hit for a ton of damage. You do have a chance of bringing all of them, especially since they're boosted by his passive, which you saw before. Uh, great attack. This is a huge damage attack ready on turn 1-2, so sometimes you may just want to nuke someone from orbit if Rocket's special didn't kill them. Sometimes you don't really need to, and you can worry about using his special, which is Clever Distraction. Grant two ability energy to random adjacent allies. Uh, since it's random, it's not two for each ally. You always want Star Wars next to one character, that character being the character you want energy to. Pay attention to summoners uh, or like characters like Hela. If that Greg shows up right next to him, Greg might steal that energy. Not great, but who's to say? Uh, apply blind to primary target and an additional random target. This ability is unavoidable. Um... If you're targeting the target you want to blind, it's great. Uh, you don't really have control over the second one, and of course, tier fouring, 50% chance to apply blind to a third random target. Let's be clear. If you're starting to use these characters in higher fights, like higher U6s or even U7, they're going to resist that blind. So the 50% chance for them to resist the blind, if it was a guaranteed two targets, yes. Absolutely. No question. 50% chance this goes with his passive. I don't... I no one, Everyone says they did it, and everyone says, man, it saved me. And I'm like, I, I don't believe you. <laughs> you know? I, 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 I don't believe you. I, I believe that there are more times where uh, it, if it worked, you would have won than it didn't. And if that's the case, you're probably in a bad situation to begin with. So I don't really like tier 4 this. I don't think you get enough out of it. Again, your mileage may vary. Comment below. Uh, Element Gun... Whatever, basic, does damage, chains, no big deal, no need to tier 4. If you are going to tier 4, I think Improvisation is the best one, but if you just kind of looked at the breakpoints I've put out for this entire team, you'll see that they do not require many tier 4s. They're all vanity investments, which is great for a team that you get so early. Between 3 and 5 months into the game, you can have a 5 to 6 star version of this team, and then you can complete pretty much all of the mid-game to late-game content while you're starting to work on the characters that you are a little bit more interested in, like Black Bolt and as Guardians, etc. Whatever. Uh, break points for this team are great. At 100k, they will be able to do 90% of what you need them to. At about 150 to 180k, 
this team is going to be able to do U6 up to probably the final difficulty. You can be a little bit more modular with them and put in, you know, Thanos and Minerva. You could just put in Minerva instead of Mantis as a healer. Um, you can kind of mishmash with the Spider-Verse team. Uh, like, you can use Groot and Star-Lord with uh, the three symbiotes, and that'll probably be great because Groot will take heal blocks off them if they can't survive, and Star-Lord will throw energy into, off the top of my head, maybe Carnage because Carnage's cooldowns are a little bit slow. You can do a lot with the independent characters, but as an entire team, you'll see that between 150 and 200k, uh, you're not going to find much of an issue with uh, the hardest versions of U6 as a complete team. You know, 200k, of course, being about 40k or so per character. And as you can see, most of my uh, non rocket Star Wars characters are still around 40k because I never needed to invest more into them. There are characters that you should invest in, and if you're familiar with my stream, you're familiar with my concept of Holy Trinities, uh, which I'm going to do an entire YouTube video on soon, but most teams have something called a Holy Trinity, three characters that you want to invest in, where the other characters don't need the investment, um, or as much of an investment to do what they do. For example, uh, Drax doesn't need the ability in materials or a lot because he's a stat character, uh, Mantis doesn't really need much because she's just a healer, but since the team's core is Star Wars, Rocket, and Groot, and since they all do a great job of what they do, those characters' investments uh, could be higher than the rest of the team, and you end up with a stronger version of that team for a lot of the content you try. Um, other than that, I don't think there's much else I can say. If I haven't sold you on the idea that the Guardians are a phenomenal team throughout the game, I don't think anyone's going to be able to, so good luck with whatever else you're doing. But if you do eventually unlock the Guardians, do know that you will never not use the team. They will always be useful outside of the standard issue, I can do this one event occasionally. You will never regret having a strong Guardians team. You won't regret any of the investment you placed in the characters to get them there, really, especially because it doesn't take much. They are, um, as far as my rating concerned, they are uh, like an A plus team. They're not quite an S team because they don't hard counter like the meta, you know, like X Men or uh, as Guardians. You know, they're not just a monster of a team, but because they're never not useful. Because you can use them on any side of a war. Because you can use them in multiple different raids as a team and as a character. They're actually required. Eh, required is a hard word. They're actually useful in gamma raids at the beginning and the end. They're, they're so useful to the game that if the Guardians are the first team you get, I promise you you're going to have a better experience than anyone who doesn't, regardless of how much time, money, or effort you're willing to spend in the game. Uh, other than that, I'm pretty much sure I'm done here. Comment below, let me know uh, if you're excited to get the Guardians, if you've had the Guardians, uh, where you specifically stopped working on them because better options came up, any of that. That's all interesting to me. So let me know what you think. Uh, other than that, I've been Tony Scanchili. Have a good night. Have a great day. And I'll catch you later.